Hello everybody and welcome to this lesson in the Pioneer School Extra about casting out demons. Last time I laid the foundation where we spoke about how Jesus drove out demons and the 12 and the 70 and now it's for everyone who believes and these signs follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. This time I'm going to build on this and do it a little more practical. We are going to look at some examples of Book of Acts 8, where you read about Philip in Samaria. How Philip came to Samaria, an unclean spirit cried out with a loud voice and came out of people, and lame people was healed and was walking. We believe Jesus is the same today, and this is what we should experience today. And I, I'm going in this program to show a lot of clips. This is one clip from Hanover in Germany a few days ago, where you saw, see this. This woman came to me and the demon started to screen and look what happened. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I would not go. Be quiet, come on, come on. Be quiet, come on, come on. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Come on, come on, come on, come on, you leave her. Come on. And then she could walk without crutches. She came with crutches, and now you see she walk. <laughs> and a big joy came to the city, as we read in Book of Acts 8. We are looking at Book of Acts 19 about different things, and then we are trying to put it all together. How, when it's cast out demon, how it's renewing the mind, and how it's all about love. Because the love of God can really set us free. And I'm using my own example how God has set me free. And using other examples. And then I ended up praying for you out there who need freedom, who need deliverance. So welcome to this lesson about casting out demons. God bless you. Yeah, hello everybody, we are back again uh, with a new lesson about casting out demons. Last time I went through uh, some of the things you see here behind me about what Jesus did, how he cast out demons, how he called the 12 to do it, how the 70 did it, and now it's for everyone who believe. And also we talked about last time that there was religious people who came with different things saying that this is not for today and that we should be careful and so on and so on. In this lesson I'm going to be a little more practical. I'm going to continue where I ended, but be a little more practical. How do this work? How do it work with casting out demons, with renewing the mind, with using the gospel? So have you not seen the last list? I encourage you to start with that because then it will give you a better overview of what I'm going to talk about now. I'm also going to show you uh, some exciting videos in this lesson about where you see how demons is leaving and how it looks like. So the whole idea is that you experience freedom and that you out there, you will go out and cast out demons because this is what we are called for. So it's going to be really interesting. I look so much forward to this. I would just start with, with praying. God, thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you because, Jesus, you have given us authority to go out and cast out demons and heal the sick. You have called us to preach the gospel. Pray that you come and use this lesson to open our eyes and our ears and help us to set us free so we can live in the power, live the life you have for us. Come with your Holy Spirit and help me to share what you want me to share in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, cast out demons. Uh, first, I want to share some testimonies because a lot of things is happening right now. Actually, uh, I just got told today that I'm going to be on Danish TV, the biggest TV show in Denmark, in a few days, Monday evening. Monday evening I will be on live TV in Denmark, on the biggest TV station at 7 o'clock, where I will talk about casting out demons. Because Monday evening later at 8.30 on TV2 in Denmark, they are sending a program where I'm part of it. And in that program it's actually also about casting out demons. Because a few months ago there came a host to me 
uh, who follow me out on the street, who want to see how we were doing it out on the street when it came to praying for people and when it came to actually deliverance and casting out demons. Because this is something people are talking about today, like what is it? Is it weird for people? Is there really demons today? And how do it look like when people are set free? And uh, so Monday evening, that our live TV program. And Monday evening later, I'm going to be on this program. And they're going to send this program with me. I just want to show a clip from the live program. This is going to be on Danish TV. This is a clip that's going to be sent where you see me out on the street uh, a few months ago, where we stood out on the street and there was a woman there who looked at us and asked, can we pray for you? And she said, yes, and she came to us. And I asked her what her problem was. And her problem was she had asthma and she had been overrated two times in her heart. So she had been burned in her heart two times as an operation. And I prayed for her. And what you're going to see in this clip is that the way I often pray for people is I hold their hands and get them to relax. And then I pray, lead them to a prayer and pray for God to come and set them free. Sometimes we see healing where it's just like healing happen. Other times we see a demon manifested like a deliverance is taking place. And what you see here is the way she react. You can see she start to go back and she start to react. So in this way it's clear to see that there is something demonic. So I'll just show it. It's in Danish, but I'll try to translate what they're saying. Go now, go now. Go now, go now. And you can see she's reacting, she's going backwards and something is happening. And I don't close my eyes, I look really close to their eyes and see what is happening. And something left there I felt, and then I pray for the Holy Spirit to come over her. And say, you can feel something. Yeah, I went back, what was that? I don't know what it was. And I said, yes, something reacted in you. It was fear and something that also left you. Try to breathe again. Look at her now. Whoa, it's so different than before. Try again. Can you feel it's gone? Where do I find, find you in some month? <laughs> and it's easy, it's about. It's not about me. So this was a small clip that's going to be in a part of our program in Denmark. We are called to cast out demons. We should not be afraid of it. We should not be afraid of it doing it in public. We should not be afraid of doing it on TV. <laughs> we should not be afraid of doing it out on the street. There are often been a lot of fear in the church when it comes to the money. But you see in the Bible that they did not hide it away. They did not take the demon and say, whoa, it's a demon, we have to be careful. We have to put it in, close a door inside a room where nobody saw it. No, in the Bible we see that it happened public, out there. And we have got authority not only to heal the sick, but also to cast out demons. With that woman, when I prayed for her, I thought it was a healing she needed. But as soon as I prayed, the Holy Spirit came over her and the demons started to manifest. And she got set free. And uh, this is now going to come out to many people. And I'm going to have the chance to be on a live program and tell more about what God is doing. First, we are going to experience many religious people and non-believers and people who don't believe in what we are doing. But we are also going to meet many people who actually believe in it. When we talk about the religious people, last time we saw some of the things they were saying uh, to try to create fear in us when it comes to casting out demons. And one of the examples that have been used a lot to create fear in us who believe, to say that it's dangerous and we should not cast out demons, is from Acts 19. Acts 19, verse 13, we read that there was this seven sons of Sceva, or how you say it. And we read here in Acts 19, 13, that there was some Jewish exorcists who took upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who was demon-possessed. 
and we read there what happened. And what happened? The demon answered, Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? And then the man with the demon jumped off them, hit them, took the clothes off, so those seven sons run away naked. Maybe you have heard that story in church. I have heard it a few times and I often heard it as an example. Be careful, be careful, be careful. Here was somebody who tried to use the name of Jesus, but they, they, they were new in it. They don't have experience and therefore the de guy with the demon jumped off them and hit them. So they needed to flee naked from that place. Maybe you have heard that also as an example to be scared and be afraid when it comes to casting out demons. But this is not talking about somebody who's born again. This is not talking about seven sons of Sceva who have the Holy Spirit and who believe in Jesus. This is talking about somebody who don't have the Spirit inside of them, who do not know Jesus. And we know that for sure by reading the text in context. Every time you read a text, always read it in context. Try to read what is written before and what is written after the text. Because when you see what is written before and after this text, you understand what it's all about. After this text where we read that the seven sons run away naked, we read this. When this you know, when this, the news of the seven sons became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear and the name of our Lord Jesus was held in high honor. So what is happening here? Here we have a man with a demon who jumped upon seven people who tried to cast out the demon and they fled away naked. The next thing that happened was that a big fear came upon the people and they worshipped Jesus. They worshipped God. It don't make sense. Why will they worship God? Why would they lift up the name of Jesus and worship Jesus? When a demon had just jumped off seven people and took the clothes off them so they needed to flee. It will not make sense. If a Christian, born again Christian today, come in and try to cast out a demon, and that demon jumped on them and beat them, so they need to fly away, and people in the church hear that, they will not, oh, thank you, Jesus, you are so amazing, your name is so up high and so amazing. No. Why did they worship God? Because they knew that those people were not believers. They were not born again. And they worship God because what happened before that? Because a few words before that, we read this. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So even the handkerchief and Abrus that have touched him was taken to those who were ill and the illness was cured and the demon, the even spirit left. Them. So what do we read here a verse before? We read that God did a miracle, amazing miracle to Paul. They took some of the clothes he had weared, who had touched him. They took their clothes, went to people who were sick, went to people who have demons, and as soon as they laid their clothes off them, the demon left them. And then what happened? Those seven sons who was ecstasies who tried to cast out demons but did not know Jesus, they saw the miracles by the hands of Paul. So they went out and tried to cast the demon out of the Jesus Paul, with, in the name of Jesus that Jesus Paul knew and the demon jumped off them. And people saw the difference between those new age alternative non-believers who try to cast out demons and then the real life through Paul. And what was the result of that? The name of Jesus was lifted high and 
many came and openly confessed what they have done, and a number who have practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned it publicly. So here we see the full story. The full story is not that we should be afraid of casting out demons, because this is not born again believers. The full story is that by the name of Jesus we have authority. And people saw the power through the hands of Paul. Then there was some people who practiced sorcery, who tried to use the name of Jesus, but it did not work good. And people there saw the difference between those people who was practicing sorcery and the real life. And what happened? Many of them came afterward and confessed what they have done and brought their things and burned it public. Why? Why work with sorcery when we have the real thing? Why work with false gods when we have the name of Jesus, when Jesus is alive? And this is the same we are seeing today when we start to see the power of God, how the Holy Spirit is working. People bring their things and burn it public. People bring their things and destroy it. They don't want to have to do with sorcery anymore. And it was what we saw in Germany a few weeks ago. We were in Berlin a few weeks ago where we visited a family. It was second time we were there and we saw Second time we were there, a demon came out of people. There came new people and they got set free from demon. They fall on the floor and the demon left them and people got healed and set free. And that family had also a lot of things like we read here in Book of Acts 19 with sorcery and things they have been using. So they gather all of those things they have in the garden. In the, in the house and you can see there is a lot of idols here they had. And what did they do? They destroyed it all. So this is the before and after picture. It looked like this, and then they destroyed it. Why? Because they saw the real life. They saw what it was all about. And this is what we need to do today. We need to see the power of God. We should not be afraid to cast out demons. Because like here, Paul did it out there on the street. There, public, there was people where demons left them. There was people who saw it and they tried to do the same, but they couldn't because there's only power in the, truth, in the name of Jesus. And the result of that was that many repented. Why? Because people want the real stuff. Okay, so what do we see? We see Jesus throw out demons. He have called the 12 to do it, the 17, and now it's for everyone who believes. It's for you and me. And I want to just come with an example more from the Bible in the book of Acts. Uh, and this is with Philip. Book of Acts chapter 8. We read this about Philip. He proclaimed Christ to them. And we need to do the same. Proclaim Christ. But we know that kingdom of God is not words only, it's power. So proclaim Christ and the crowd with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip. Why? Because they saw, and when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. And try to put it down here, I don't know if people can see it. But this is what we read here. These signs follow those who believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall get healed. This was a sign, as I talked about last time, that followed those people who believe. And what did we see? Philip, he went out and people listened at one accord to what he said. Why? When they saw the signs he did. And Philip was not one of the twelve. He was not one of the seventy. Philip, he was a guy who was filled by the Spirit, like you and me should be. What was the sign they saw? For unclean spirit, crying out with a loud voice, came out of many who have them. And many who were paralyzed and lame was healed, so there was much joy in 
the city. This is what we read with Philip, that Philip came to Samaria and these signs follow those who believe. So people listen to Philip. He did not speak like a Pharisee. He did not just speak with words, but you saw the Holy Spirit. You saw how the Spirit of God worked through Philip. So they listened and they saw the signs. What signs? Those signs who follow those who believe that many with unclean spirit got set free and many lame was healed. And we see here that they came out with a loud voice. This is often what happened. Do we truly believe, as I said before in the 20 lessons, do we truly believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever? If you said yes, then you also believe that the Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the book of Acts is a book, not about the first 12 apostles. It's a book where you get a picture into the diary of the early church, as I say in lesson, I think it's lesson three on the Pioneer School. So the book of Acts gave us a picture of how the early church was working. And if the Holy Spirit is the same, we should see the same today. We should not just go out and, cast, and heal the sick. We should also go out and cast out demons. And sometimes it's quiet, sometimes it's big, with a big loud voice, and sometimes lame people walk and people are getting healed. And this is our heart to see the same. And we saw it like almost a little picture of this a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, we were in Hanover in Germany. And I want you to see this video, it's really amazing. We were doing an open air in Germany. And in this open air, a woman came to me. There were 700 people at the open air. And a woman came and before I even started to pray for her, she, ah, she started to manifest. And what you see here is, you don't see it so clear in the picture, but she came with a cane. She was walking with a crotch, or with a crotch. And she had problem walking. So she came like walking like this with a crotch. And when she came, you almost see like Philip here, that the demons came out with loud voice and the lame could walk. So this is from Hanover, it's only 30 seconds. And try to listen to what the demon was saying here because I don't want to go and yeah, you hear it. Are ready? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I would not go. I would not be quiet. Go. Come on. Come on. Be quiet. Come on. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Come on. 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 Hi. Come on. Oh, try to walk. How is it now? <laughs> Hallelujah. And here you see a picture, a picture of Book of Acts 8. Like Philip in Samaria, we were just in Hanover in Germany. Out there public, a woman came with a cane, problem walking. But what happened? The demon was screaming. Ah, start to manifest. But by the name of Jesus, by the authority, that Jesus, a demon went out. And I want to say when I'm doing this teaching, I don't want to go into a lot of details. People ask sometimes, oh, where do demons come from? I need to know it. And how do they look? And so on and so on. To be honest, I don't care how demons look. I think there's a reason we don't see them. Because if we saw them, I think we would maybe be scared. I just know one thing, Jesus has commanded me to cast out demons. And I love Jesus and I want to obey him. And we need authority. And sometimes the more you know about the details, the more difficult sometimes it is to believe. For example, if you pray for somebody with a broken arm, if you in your head start to imagine now, now those bones go together and how with those scenes and bones go together when I'm praying, do it look like this? You more you try to imagine with your head, you difficult will it 
be to believe it. But if you just accept it, like this is the truth, I don't want to understand it, I don't want to know exactly how and how it looks, I just love Jesus and do it. Then you will see a breakthrough. And you see it here with demons, we, we cast demons out every week and, and sometimes it becomes stronger and stronger and we have seen an amazing clips and amazing things where people get set free. And I come down to the simple stuff again. In Matthew 17, you read that Jesus, you know, there was a guy who had a son who had a demon and they brought that son to Jesus' disciples and Jesus' disciples could not cast out that demon. When Jesus came, he rebuked the disciples for their lack of faith and set that boy free. And then he talked to them later that that kind only is driven out by prayer fasting. We're not talking about that special kind of demons. No, we're talking about that unbelief, that spirit of unbelief that was in the disciples. Because you don't have to go to a praying and fasting to fight, cast out special demons. Demons are all the same. We have all our authority in heaven and earth to cast out demons. Our problem is our lack of faith, our unbelief. And sometimes we there need to pray and fast for us to be set free from that unbelief, lack of faith. And when that is gone in our life, then we have authority. So the more I see the fruits of, of what the Pioneer School do and the teaching and, and what we see, the more I come down to is that simple Simple faith. You don't need to know a lot of details. You just need to take authority and then do it. Know that Jesus died on the cross. He had the victory. He rose up again. He went to heaven and he sent his Holy Spirit down here. Now it's you and me who are sent here in Christ's place as his body to continue the good work. He had all authority in heaven and earth, and he has been given that to us, so we can now go out in the name of Jesus to cast out demons, heal the sick, and proclaim the kingdom of God. And it's that simple faith I hope this teaching will give to you. A question, can Christians have demons? This is always something people ask. Can Christians have demons? It's interesting, if you go to the Bible in, in Luke and see in Luke the first demon Jesus cast out, it was in the synagogue. It was actually in the synagogue. He cast out the first demon in the church. So he came to the synagogue and there a man with unclean demon start to manifest and he cast it out. The same we see today. There is people in church who start to manifest who have demons. When people say Christian cannot have demons, I think people don't know what demons is causing and what a demon is. Not going into a lot of detail, but here in Luke chapter 11, as I talked about last time, you read that Jesus cast out a demon that was mute. And when that demon that was mute had came out of that person, the mute man spoke and everybody was amazed. So here there came a guy to Jesus who could not speak. He had a sickness. His sickness was that he was mute, he could not speak. His sickness was caused by a demon, a mute demon. So when Jesus cast out that mute demon, when that demon was out of him, that man who was before mute could now speak. He was healed. So in this case, you see that this demon was a demon that caused him to not speak. There is other demons where people have sickness is caused by demons. It can be deafness, mute. Jesus he healed a blind guy by casting out a demon and then a the blind guy could see. So in his case, it was a demon that caused that sickness. I don't say it's the same every time because you also read that Jesus healed a sick where it was not a demon he cast out, he just lay a blind, where it was not a demon, he just lay the blind on the person and he could see. But imagine that this 
is that demon. And this demon is a mute demon. And I'm a non-believer and I have a mute demon in me. So I cannot speak. Or I have a blind demon. I cannot see. Or I have a demon or unclean spirit in me. Or I have a demon that cause me being paralyzed or other things. What happens if we believe that non-Christian a Christian cannot have demons? Then we believe in that second that somebody become a Christian, born again. That demon is out of there and therefore they are healed. But do we see this? Do we see this in the church today that when people enter into Christ, when they come to Christ, that right away that sickness have left. Many places you don't see that. I think it should be like that and we see it more and more. We see more and more when people get baptized through Christ right away, those demons are leaving and they are getting healed. They are getting set free. So we see it more and more. I just shared a testimony with uh, 37 people who got baptized a few days ago uh, with somebody I spoke with from Italy. And, uh, and they got convinced and, and they had people who have eaten the or disorder and other sickness. When they came out of water, they got set free and they got healed. So we see it more and more, but it's not something we normally see or have been seen in the church. Because in the church today, we see many sick people. Therefore, we see also many sick people who have demons. We see me many believers who have demons. If you, so if you ask me, can a Christian have demons? Yes. Should it be like that? No. No. I believe that in the early church, they preached a different gospel than we do today. A radical gospel about repentance and denying yourself and turn away from your sin. And then when they got baptized to, in water to Jesus Christ, it was not just a symbol, it was radical. I die with Christ, I rise up with Christ. And in that day, is deliverance taking place. And then they receive the Holy Spirit and they start a new life. I believe it was what they saw. Or like Book of Acts 8, where Philip came to Samaria and the demons already left and people already got healed. So when they later got baptized in water, those demons was already gone and those sick was already healed. So therefore, yes, they did not see a lot of Christians with a lot of demons. But today we have a church where many people inside church are not born again. They are not fully born again. They have not understood what repentance is, what baptism, what, what Holy Spirit. So do I believe Christians should have demons? No. Like, I don't believe that Christians should get divorced and remarried and so on again and again. I do not believe that Christians should live in sin. I do not believe that Christians should go after being rich and living their whole life. No, I do not believe that Christians should do this and this and this. But we are living a time where we see many people inside church who call themselves Christian and some of those need deliverance. But what do we then do when there is a demon? How do we cast out that demon? What I normally do, sometimes it comes automatically. Sometimes you go to somebody and you start to talk and right away you just see there is a demon. Or you start to pray and they start to manifest and you see there is a demon. So when you see there is a demon, you just cast out that demon. Other times we don't know if, if there is a demon or not. And I will talk about that. First, I want to show a clip here. This was from this. This is from uh, a few days ago here in Aalborg, where we are, where we had a kickstart. A few days ago when we had a kickstart, we, I took people up to demonstrate how to pray for people as we often do and demonstrate how to talk to people. And I took a few people up and I stood with a woman and I was explaining, like, when you go to somebody and stop them, you smile and you relax and you don't do like this. You, you just very nice smile and go to them and like say, hey, excuse me, can I talk to you? Hey, can I ask you a question? Are you sick? Can we pray for you? So this was what I wanted to demonstrate. But what happened here, we see it more and more, is when I came to her and said, hey, excuse me, 
I didn't have time to say more because as soon as I came close to her and said, excuse me, everybody thought it was a demon because he started to scream and fall down and the demon was manifest and this woman there in front of everybody got set free from a demon. And I want to show the clip here. Are ready? So it's not a good quality, but here I am. And here you can see this woman there is the woman I go to to demonstrate how to stop people and say, excuse me, can I pray for you? But this is what happened. And there, there was some false tongues and different things, and then it left. Yeah. So here's a little clip, but in this case, what happened here, we go to somebody, and as soon as we stop, as soon as we talk with them, something is reacting. I would say you more we work live with Jesus, you closer we come into him and you more authority we and you more we recognize the authority we have, you more we will see this. You more we will see that demons start to manifest already before we come to them, as soon as we talk to them, as soon as and we have a lot of stories where people come here to us and feel oh, oh I feel something is bad and so on and things react already. So this is what sometimes happen. What often happen is that we are not sure if a person has a demon. And there what we do, we start to talk with them. And when I meet a person, I have a video here I want to show. It was from New Zealand where there came a guy. And when I talked to him, he said that he had a problem with the Holy Spirit. He had a lot of fear. And it was not easy for him to pray in tongues and, and he was really afraid because he came from a very, very religious background and he felt there was something in him who reacted against this freedom and against the Holy Spirit. So by talking with him and hearing what he says, I can then say, okay, I don't think this is just a renewing of the mind. I think it's not just a question of the gospel here. I think actually here is something demonic. So what do I do? I, I take his hand and pray with him. And then I lead him to a prayer. This is often what I do, where he also at the same time repent for that wrong thought and religious spirit. And when we do that, we just command that spirit to go. Often even before we see a manifestation. I encourage you to try that. Pray for them and then say, Spirit, come out. Go, go, religious spirit. I command you. I command you, religious spirit. Like Jesus, he said there that this man, he had a problem. And the problem was he was mute. So he called the mute spirit to go. If I meet somebody who say, I have a problem with depression. I will often say, you spirit of depression, go right now. If they have a problem with fear, you spirit of fear, go right now. If they have a problem with sickness moving around in the body, you spirit of sickness, go right now. This guy, he had a problem with religious spirit and fear and other things. So I say, you religious spirit, you spirit of fear, I command you to leave right now. And when you do that and speak, 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 what often is that when you take authority and start to speak to that issue, that demon, they start to react. And I said last time, sometimes reaction is just a breathing and the demon is out. Other times it's a little more like, like you see in this video here. In the name of your command, I think go! Spirit, go! 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 So you can see I just take a thought here, command it to go. Come on! But not against God, say, come on in the name of Jesus! Go! Go! I just felt that something something has has, has been lifted and and I felt uh, I felt free, I felt I felt the peace of God again. I, I, I felt that, yeah, Lord, I, I thank you. I thank you for setting me free. So again, here, here is an example 
where you saw, and there's so many videos with, with that in, in our movie and on YouTube. I encourage you to just see some of the videos. So what do we do? Sometimes demon just manifest, and when you see the demon, you just come out in the name of Jesus. You don't have to know why the demons is there. You don't have to know how many. You don't have to don't don't make it complicated. Don't. There's a lot of video on YouTube where people do weird things. To be honest, where people are talking with the demon and interviewing the demon. I don't see that. I don't see that in Bible, and actually I don't like it. When demon is speaking, Jesus spoke back to them, but very often he says, shut up. <laughs> he said, be quiet, come out now. He did not go in with a dialogue to ask, demon, why are you there? Are you allowed to be there? And what had that person done? He, he didn't go into a lot of things. He just said, be quiet, come out now. One time he asked, how many are you? And then he heard how many there was, and he cast everyone out at the same time. But he never went in to go in a dialogue. And, and I think the problem today is that we, we, can, like we cannot trust demons. Demons is liars. Jesus, it was different when Jesus asked, how many are you? Because Jesus was the son of God. He knew the truth. He knew everything. You cannot lie to Jesus, but you can lie to us. Because we don't know the whole truth. Jesus knows the truth. He is the truth. We are not. So... I've seen videos on YouTube where people are teaching about the spirits around, where they are into you, demon, why did you come and where, where, where do you come from and so on and so on and so on. I don't like that because I don't trust what those demons are saying, first thing. Another thing, if we take and start to interview and talk with the demon, we forget that there is a person behind that deliverance and that person it's a big thing for them to experience the demons is speaking through them. I have met people who went through a deliverance where they interviewed the demons almost and spoke with the demon and make it become a long, long, long deliverance. And yes, maybe that person got set free in the end, but that person now have a lot of problem with fear afterwards. Because to experience a demon is taking over and speaking through your body is not a good experience for that person. So therefore, I believe we should do it fast and quick, not go through a lot of things. Just say, take the authority and so on. People ask me sometimes, why do I shout? Sometimes I shout because I don't want people to hear the demon. The demon is shouting, so I shout louder. Other times I shout because, to be honest, sometimes I don't want to listen to my fear. I can have a little fear sometimes and I don't want to listen to it. So therefore I shout, I take authority. I know I'm not heard because of my lo loud voice, but if like a dog is coming inside and the dog is really dirty and inside the house, you will not say, uh, dog, can, can you go out please? <laughs> the dog will not obey. But if you say, come out now, dog, go out. The dog, dog know that you really mean it. The same way with the demons. If you just, demon, please go out, the demon don't listen. But if you say, demon, come out. But you don't have to scream, but you can say it in a way with authority so that demons know that they have to go. Before I go there, another question people ask is, what about the return of the unclean spirit? We read in Matthew 12 that a G, when a Jesus said, if a demon is, is come out of somebody with unclean spirit, they will go around and then if that house is empty, they will come back with seven other demons. And people sometimes use this example to say, you are not allowed to cast demons out of non-believers or they need to have the Holy Spirit, otherwise those demons will come back. First thing, when Jesus said that in Matthew 12, he did not say it as a teaching how to cast out demons. He did not say it to somebody who had just get set free from a demon. He just said it as a truth. This is what sometimes happened. But we see again and again that they healed, they set many, many people free from demons and they never used that words to those people who were set free. We don't see it. Another thing, 
If Jesus is saying there that when a demon comes out of people, if people are not filled with the Holy Spirit, that demon will come back. Remember that every or nobody of those people Jesus cast out the demon of could receive the Holy Spirit. No one. No one. Because there was no Holy Spirit given on earth at that time Jesus was walking here. So when he cast out a demon, some of those people should wait maybe three years before they were able to receive the Holy Spirit. So it did not hinder Jesus in casting out those demons, knowing that those people could not receive the Holy Spirit and maybe will not receive the Holy Spirit. The same, this word should not hinder us in just going out to cast out demons. But yes, we believe that if you first are set free and go back, it can be worse. But this is not only with demons. He's talking about sin. He's talking about sickness. He's talking about everything. Because in John 5, 14, we read that Jesus healed a guy who were paralyzed. He had been paralyzed for 39 years and he just healed that guy who were paralyzed. Jesus did not say anything to him, he just healed him. Later on, he met him in the temple and when he met him again, he said, see you are will, will go and sin no more so nothing worse may happen to you. So here Jesus said to somebody who were paralyzed who got healed, Go sin no more, so nothing worse will happen to you. What we are called to do is to heal the sick, to cast out demons. Sometimes you felt that after they have got set free, that maybe you should say to them, hey, you have to stop sinning now. You have to turn away from your lifestyle, otherwise it's going to be worse. Sometimes you feel you should say it, Sometimes you feel you should not say it, like we read in the Bible. So let's, let's, let's put it all together. We have now talked about that Jesus drove out demons, the 12 did it, the 70 did it, and these signs follows those who believe. And we saw with Philip that he was one of those believers, and they listened to what he says when they saw the sign that followed him. What sign was this? Many with unclean spirit got set free and many sick got healed. This is the same for you and me today. We have authority. You don't need to know a lot. You just need to know that Jesus has done it on a cross and you can do it. You don't need to know why that demon is there, what, uh, how many there is. You don't need to go in details. If you meet somebody who starts to react as soon as you come there, you know there is a demon and there you just take authority and you call out and command that demon to go. Sometimes it's like, <gasps> and you just see they're free and you know they're free. Other times, they relax and you are not sure, so you ask them, how are you? Do you feel you're free? Yeah. Oh, no, no, I feel less a little more. Okay, we pray a little more. And you pray and you command it to go. So we have been given authority to cast out demons. We don't need to ask permission. We just go and do it. When that is said, it's not everything that is demonic, as I said last time. Demons we cast out, spirit, mind we renew. We do not cast out the mind and try to renew the spirit. We cast out the spirit and renew the mind. And as I said last time, sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes we really need the gospel. And I'll try to put it all together and explain how I use this. When demon is manifesting by talking with them, or when you start to pray for a sickness and the demon is manifesting, you just take authority and cast it out. When people are coming to you and say, can you pray for me? I have a problem. Often what you can do is you can say, okay, what is your problem? And by hearing what their problem is, you can then create a picture in your mind so you know what they need to be free. For example, if somebody come and say, oh, I, I really have problem with, with porn. I have been seeing a lot of porn on the internet and I feel, 
addicted to it and, and, and it's, it's really hard. In some cases, it can be everything. It can be a renewing of the mind that needs to take place. It can also be an unspin, unclean spirit and, and deliverance need to take place. If I meet a person who has that, my question is first, the gospel. Have you repented? Or do you just live in sin with many other things also? Or is it just that thing that is not easy to let go? Have you repented and have you got a new heart? Question, have you got baptized in water after you repented? And have you received the Holy Spirit? Because the Bible says, again, as I said last time, the one who do sin become a slave to sin. He have now seen a lot of porn on the internet and he had become a slave to it. What he need, of course, is to repent, but he also need to bury the old body. He need to get rid of that old body who are bound to sin. And in that case, I have seen many people come and have been bound to sin. And when they, they get baptized in water and come out again, they are free. Or it's leaving them right away. So I will ask, what about this, what about this, what about this? And if he say, I have repented, I am baptized in water, I have the Holy Spirit, I speak in tongues, then I will say, okay, let's pray and see what happened. And then I will take his hand and lead him to a prayer of repentance. I don't know if it's a spirit, I don't know if it's just a renewing of the mind. So I work with everything at the same time. So I lead him to a prayer of repentance. And as soon as he prayed a prayer and asked forgiveness, I would just speak as there is a demon. I would then say, you unclean spirit, go right now. I command you unclean spirit, go right now, go right now, go right now. Command this spirit, unclean spirit, this spirit of addiction, this spirit of porn. I command you spirit, come out of him, leave him right now. And I would speak like there is something. After a few seconds, often, or 10 seconds, 15 minutes, seconds. <sighs> he starts to breathe and he starts to manifest. So you therefore see there is a spirit. And then you command onto <laughs> his coughing and he's out of there. <sighs> and something left him. And then I see, say, now it's gone, but now you have to renew your mind. Take Romans chapter 6, read it again, and say, I am free from sin. Sin has no dominion over me anymore, and so on and so on. This is how I would deal with him. Or if I pray for him and nothing manifests, then I say, okay, I don't think there is a demon. <laughs> because we have authority, and I spoke, and nothing happened. So therefore, I think you just have to renew your mind. You have to understand that you are free. And then I will encourage him to read Romans 6 and pray about it when he get that understanding of what it is and there he will experience a freedom. This is one example. Not an example. Uh, a woman come to me and she say, I have a problem with eating disorder. I have a problem with that. Okay. How did it start? I will often ask that. How did it start? And then you actually find out the eating disorder is not the main problem. The main problem, the eating disorder is just the fruit of the main problem. The main problem maybe was problem with her parents, that she have us unforgiveness toward them because she have a hurt because, or she experienced something in school or somebody teased her. So I have a problem, but I want to go to the root of the problem. And there, when it's like that, I know that it can be demonic, it can, it's maybe start up as a hurt and bitterness and unforgiveness, but it can open the door to something that is demonic. So I will again ask her, what about the gospel first? Have you repented? Have you got baptized water, the Holy Spirit? If not, I will actually just sit down and go through the gospel with him, her, and then take it all right away. If that is okay, I will then say, okay, are you ready to forgive those people who hurt you? Are you ready to let go? Why? Because I don't know if it's a demon and I don't know if it's renewing the mind. And no matter what, I want to work with the full freedom. I want to work with everything at the same time. If it's just a demon, they don't need to forgive. You can just cast out that demon. But if she have problem with 
forgiveness. Then for her to really be free in her mind, she needs to forgive. I hope you understand it. Uh, so what do I do with her? I will lead her to a prayer. I say, are you ready to forgive those people who teach you in school? Are you ready to forgive your parents and let go? And if she is, I will take her hand, pray with her, lead her to a prayer of confession. I forgive those people who hurt, I forgive my parents. And then as soon as I pray for her, I will say, let go, let go. Freedom, freedom, freedom. I speak to this demon, I command this spirit to leave her right now. I command this spirit to go right now in the name of Jesus. And I will take authority over that spirit of eating disorder. And I will just say it like eating disorder. Like Jesus, there was a dumb spirit. He said, dumb spirit, come out. Here is the problem, is eating disorder. I say, eating disorder, come out. If her problem is depression, depression, come out. If her problem is fear, fear, come out. So every time I meet somebody who needs healing or freedom or in a counseling session or something, I would say, what is your problem? And they say, my problem is this, 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 this. So I create a picture. Okay, this is those things. It can be renewing the mind, it can be the gospel, it cast out demon, and there's power in the gospel. So I will then talk with her, lead her through prayer, repentance, forgiveness, or share the gospel with her, and then I will take authority. And in many cases, as soon as you take authority and command that demon to go, what happened? They start to manifest and that demon is going. Sometimes you command that demon to go and nothing is happening, and then say, I don't see there is a demon. Let's continue with renewing the mind. Let's continue with understanding who you are in Christ because it don't look like it's a demon. So this is some of the things I often do when it comes to another example. Um, somebody is addicted to smoking. Again, it I've met many people who got set free by renewing their mind and by coming to that knowledge that this is a sin they need to let go. But I also met people where we actually need to pray into it and command that spirit of addiction to go. And by coughing something out, they are free. So, so everything as I see it, like Jesus heal a blind guy, sometimes just heal it, sometimes he cast out a demon. So every sin and, and sickness and addiction, it can be a renewal of the mind and it can be a cast out demon. And in many cases, the gospel is taking it all. Because in the gospel, there is the renewal of the mind and repentance, there is the buried old life in water and there is the Holy Spirit and power to live the new life. Another thing before I'm going to talk about my own life and come with some examples there. When talking about cast out demons, I think it's important for people to understand what is the normal life. Because I meet people who come to me and think that they have a lot of problems with demons, but actually they don't have a lot of problems. They're just human. They're just normal. For example, uh, often when I have a meeting, I use this example. Sometimes when I'm out driving, I can get a thought in my head to what would happen if I drive in the other side into water, a big truck. I can get that thought, but when I'm out having meeting, if I ask how many sometimes get that thought, it's maybe 30, 40 percent who sometimes think that. It's not a big issue for me and it's not a big issue for most people because we know that when we get a thought, just leave it because we know we are not going to do it and we are free not to do it. But there is people who are so afraid of demon, 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 demon and think there's demons everywhere and when they get the same thought, then they run to meeting after meeting and say, pray for me, pray for me, I have a tag, I have demons, I have demons, pray for me, help me, what is wrong with me, I got that thought. And they often think that they have big issues. No, they don't have a big issues. They are just human. Because we are living in a world here where we have problems and where we will get different thoughts and we will be tempted. But freedom is not, freedom is not, not to be tempted. Freedom is freedom not to do what we are tempted to do. So what is the normal life as a Christian? There are some people who think that the Christian life is like this. It's like you start your Christian walk and woo, it's so easy. 
this is not how it is. It was maybe how it is before you become a Christian, because when you become a Christian, I would say it looked more like this. I would say this is how my life is. I experience, I experience attacks, 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 and a big attack and a breakthrough, and a lot of attacks, and big attacks and breakthrough, a lot of attacks. And I think this is how we often is, live as Christians. And try to imagine if I'm laying at a hospital right now and I have a heart diagram on me and this is how my heart is showing. Me. If this is a heart diagram at the hospital telling about my heart, it shows I'm dead. My heart should look more like this. The same way I would say for people, if your life is like this, you are dead. You need to come alive for Jesus. You need to live for Him. Because as soon as you become alive for Jesus, I'm going to talk about that in some of the other programs about the attacks. You will experience crazy attacks. Crazy attacks. Story. Some of you have heard the story how I met my wife. The story, if you don't know it, after I became a Christian, I was to a Christian concert, and there I heard God spoke to me. He said, Torben, like, yeah. the one who stands behind you, she's going to be your wife someday. And I'm like, whoa, and I turned around and I saw her, and I just knew it was my wife. It was the one God had for me. I only smiled to her, jumped in a car, went home. I said to my friend on my way home, Hey Michael, I've just met my wife. I don't know her name, I don't know where she's from, I don't know how old she is, but God has said that girl in that dress is one day going to be my wife. I came home to my old city. I said, God, you had to put me together with her. I don't know where she's from. Three months later, he put me together and now we've been married 20 years, had three kids. It was very short how I met my wife and many have heard that story. But many have not heard another story. Some years later, after we were married, I experienced some of those attacks. And one day it came to my head, like almost the same voice as I heard many years before. Leave your wife, leave your kids, go out in the world. And I was like, what? Leave your wife, leave your kids and go out in the world. And it just came to me like my head. What? Leave your wife, leave your kids, go out. No, no, I don't. No, I, I love Lynn. I love my kids. I'm not, I love you, Jesus. I'm not going to live in sin. I'm not going to leave you. Leave your wife, leave your kids, go out in the world. Suddenly it was like somebody in my head was speaking to me that I should leave my wife, leave my kids and go out in the world. But I knew the word of God, so I took the word. No, God, what you have put together, no man shall divide. Go away, says, in the name of Jesus. And I went praying and praying against it. But it was like nothing happened. It was just in my head, my head, my head. What then? I prayed. I said it to my wife. Pray for me. Pray for me. I feel I should leave you and the kids. And, and I don't want to leave God. Pray for me. Pray for me. I feel attacked. After three days, that thing just left and I was clearing my head again. And I did not understand why can I experience something like that. A few days later, I was at a meeting where I got a prophecy. And the prophecy was that many have come to that point where I was now, but have fallen and I should do this and this and this. And when I got that prophecy, suddenly I understood something. Before that, I have sometimes... And I have never understood how can people first experience this and then fall away. But now I understand. We are in a war. We are in a spiritual war. And therefore people fall away. And the, uh, Ephesians 6 talks about taking on the armor of God. Salvation helmet to help us through those attacks and the shield of faith and so on. So I dare experience an attack. It do not mean that I had a demon. It just means that I'm alive for God. So it do not mean that I need to run to me and pray for me, pray for me. I have a demon inside. No, it's not an attack from inside. It's an attack from outside. And sometimes there is people who think they have a lot of demons, but they don't have a lot of demons. They just have the wrong focus. And they think that... They take the small attacks they experience and then they paint it up to be something big. And that's why I sometimes use this example when I talk to people about deliverance and say, 
Come on, there's nothing wrong with you that your life looks like this. It don't mean you have a lot of demons, it just means that you are taking new steps in faith and God is with you and Satan hates you. So, okay, about freedom, my life. I will try to take a person, talk about my life, about how I experience freedom, and then uh, I will pray for all of you out there. How I experienced freedom. My life was good until that day I got born, <laughs> and then the problem started. Because when I got born 40 years ago, I had a, my, many problems in my life. One of the things was I had a speaking mistake. I could not pronounce my own name. Uh, when I was younger, my name was Tom Søndergaard, uh, and I still Tom Søndergaard, but I said Gorm Gunnergaard. I could not pronounce my own name. And it was only my brothers who understood me when I was really young. Uh, so when I went to school, when my school class was together, or had a t uh, hour, or had teaching, I was very often sitting in another room with somebody teaching me to pronounce words and to speak. And I tried to pronounce words, G, 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 and tried to pronounce, and it was not easy for me. At the same time, I could not read and write, and I actually had problems with that. And, and, and I also was not together with my cl class. I was sitting in another room with somebody helping me to read and write. And, and I got checked and they tried to see if everything was okay, but I was just not good at it. At the same time, I was the fat boy in the class. I was the boy who, after school, bought a bag of chips and a Coke on my way home and saw TV the whole afternoon and evening and the day after and the day after. So you know, if you cannot read, if you cannot write, if you are fat, a big boy, and you have uh, problems speaking and you are not together with the rest of the class, you get teased a lot. So I got teased and I was, one of those who went home crying after school and, and dreamed about something else. When I left school, I had no self-confidence at all. And I had a lot of hurt inside because of what I've experienced. Then I left school and took one year on another school and I hoped maybe I can change myself here because I hated who I was. So, but when I left to another school, I could see I cannot change myself. I was the one I was. I could not change who I was. So I came in the old thing again and I got teased again and it was not easy for me. What happened then was at that time I was 16 years old, 15, 16 years old. I would say my mom meant a lot to me. I was my mom's boy because when you got teased a lot, you, my mom understood me and she was good to me. She, she loved me a lot. My father was a good man, but he worked a lot. He had his own business, so I did not have close relationship, fellowship with him. So my mom meant everything to me. What happened there was my mom, she, uh, one day when I was 16 years old, she got a stroke and she got paralyzed and was almost dying again, again, again. So suddenly I lost my mom like this, and next time I saw her, she was, yes, yeah, she was without hair laying in a hospital bed. And it did something in me. It really hurt me. It, it created some hurt inside of me. I remember when I was 16 years old, she was laying in a hospital bed, and I was alone with her, and she was paralyzed now, and she had a respirator helping her to breathe, and, and she tried to, uh, she started to come to herself and speak a little, and she tried to take that respirator out of her body. And, 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 and I was standing there saying, Mom, no, don't do it, and she tried to say, Mom, don't do it, and she tried again. I said, Mom, don't do it. And then I heard her say with a big voice, let go or I kill you. And I remember still like, like it was yesterday. When she said those words, let go or I kill you, it was like a knife just came into my body and, 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 and killed me. Something just broke inside of me. And, and she was at the hospital one and a half year and, and in that time I got hurt a lot. And, and, and um, later, a few years later, I got a girlfriend and she was unfaithful to me and I was unfaithful to her. <laughs> and I got hurt because of that, because of what she did and because of what I did. So when I was 18 years old, I had no self-confidence. 
I could not read and write. I read one small book in my whole life. I had a lot of hurt for my mom because with my mom's thing, it did that I built a big wall around me because I got hurt. And when you get hurt, you build a wall around you to protect you to not get hurt one more time. So nobody could come close to me. Nobody could talk about emotion and feeling. I, I had really problems with that. I was always making fun or pu pushing people away as soon as they came close to me. I did not believe in love at that time also because my girlfriend, I got hurt there. So as 18 years old, it was my life. Lot of problem, no self-confidence, had a hurt when it came to relationship, mom and dad, and it did not believe in love. But then God came. Da da, the Holy Spirit came in. And when the Holy Spirit came in, when God came, the first thing that happened was that I just knew nothing is impossible for that, those who believe. Nothing is impossible. Something just grow inside of me and I just knew everything is now possible. It was the first thing I experienced. Same thing I experienced in the gospel. I got set free from spirit, spirit of death. I was so afraid of dying, but when the gospel came in, that fear of dying just went away and something happened in me. And then God started to heal me, to set me free. My life was not a lot of deliverance. My life was spending time with God and seeing healing by that. And one time the Holy Spirit came in and I just started to cry. I was crying, crying every time I was at a meeting. I was crying and crying and crying. And people came and said, are you good, Tom? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Why are you crying? I don't know. But why was I crying? I was crying because some of the hurt with my mom and dad, some of the hurt came out. And I believe I went to a healing or deliverance there without anybody praying for me, but just spending time with God and renewing my mind, the healing started. Uh, and God, he started to set me free. One of the things that also really set me free was love. Love. Because what I've seen is not just about in gospel healing the sick, cast out demon is really the love. And people need to experience the love, the love of God and the love of the church. Because what was interesting with me, after I met my wife Lena, I remember one time I met somebody uh, of her, uh, my father-in-law, he, he became my spiritual father. He was an amazing guy. Lena's father is an amazing guy who had a church at home. So he became my spiritual father when, when I got born again and, and helped me and, and was there in the beginning a lot. And what was amazing, they, at, when I met them, they took me to some friends. And I remember I was a young boy, boy new in the faith, and I came into that house, and there was a big guy living in that house, and I did like this to say hi. But when I give out the hand to say hi, he just said hi, and he gave me a big hug. And I was standing like this. I was standing like this when he hugged me. It was so weird for me. And I remember I sat down on a chair afterward and I looked at this man. Who is he? He touched me. He hugged me. It felt so weird because I was not used to that. We did not touch each other in our family. We did not hug each other. We did not talk a lot about love and emotions. And I was not used to that. When he hugged me, it felt somehow weird, but it felt good. It felt like I, I, I need that. I need a strong man in my life who can be like a father, who can give me a hug. And God there start to heal me. And what I see that many people who have issues in life actually have issues because of their parents or lack of that. They have issues because they did not have a mom in their life who really could give them what they needed. And a mom is... is Supposed to create security and safety where you experience that. A father is supposed to create faith 
in you. You can do it. Come on, climb up, tall on that tree. Run faster. You can do it. Come on. You are cool. You can do it. You are amazing. I finally supposed to create that self-confidence that you can do it. What is our problem in the world today often when we counsel people and talk with people is that people do not have that father and mother in their life as I did not have like that who could create that foundation. And many people are hurt or have issues today who actually go down to that. So when I counsel people, I often ask how was your relationship with your mom and your dad? And many often we need to forgive, we need to forgive them and we need, sometimes we need to cast out demons, sometimes we just need to give people love. Just give them a big hug. What happened for me was that, that God started, I got that hug and we got it introduced to my family. So we started to hug each other in my family at home with my mom and dad because I somehow brought it in. But there's things that was difficult for me. I remember a few years ago, I was in Moldova. We were driving down there to uh, Germany and, and Poland and, and Romania and Moldova. It was a long trip. And we felt we were far away and we had been driving the whole way with my wife and family and we were going to drive to Ukraine home and so on. So I wrote a letter to my parents. I wrote, hey mom and dad, everything is good, everything is good, uh, so on, so on. See you later. And then I wrote in the end, I love you. Normally I did not write that, but I wrote it because I felt far away and I did not know if I was going to survive. <laughs> so I just wanted to let them know. And then they wrote back again, Ha ah, Torben, thank you, thank you for your letter. And especially the last three words. We have read them again and again and again. And it meant so much to my parents to hear me say that I loved them. But when I came home, I couldn't say it again. It was so difficult. And I think, what is wrong? Because I know I love my parents. Why can I not say that I love them? Maybe because I don't remember when I've heard my father say that he loved me. And God started to work in me, and, and especially the last years even, when we got the Jesus Hotel and when we start to travel, because it's so interesting when you travel, you meet many cultures. First time we came to Holland, we were saying hello, and people mm, mm, kissed. In Holland, they kissed like three times. Mm, mm. And we are not used to that. So first time we're like, oh, they're kissing. <laughs> then we went other places, South Africa, people kiss on the mouth there some places. <laughs> so every time we met somebody, hello, hello. <laughs> then then there came, a, I remember there came a girl here from Italy to, and I would say hello, and she was ready to give me a kiss. kiss. And I was thinking, oh no, Italy, is that two or three times? So I was like, mm, Italy, mm, Italy, is that two and three? And oh, <laughs> it was only two times, so. but. One time at the Jesus Hotel here, we were staying with some of the young people and I asked them, do you tell your parents that you love them? And no, 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 no. And I asked, do, do you give hug to people at home? And many people are not used to that. Many people are not used to talking about emotion. Many people are not used to that. So what did I do? I, I, I sat down and wrote a letter to my dad and said, Father, it is so difficult for me to say I love you. And I don't want it to be like that. I just want to know that I don't remember I heard it for you. It's not to come with critic, but we are not used to do that in our family. But I just want to let you know that I love you. And normally he answered back, but he didn't. So I need to call him after a few days and say, did you get the letter? Yes, thank you. But I don't know what to answer. I thought, oh, oh it's, it's okay. But I went home, and me and my father, he's 78, for the first time ever I remember, we took our father-son walk. And we talked about it. And he says, talk about your letter. Yes, we are not used to hugging each other in our family and touching each other. And I have not said that I love you because my father had never told me that he loved me. I'm not used to this. And for me to hear that word actually did something in me. 
Because it's not because my parents don't love me, but they did not know how to say it. Because they were influenced themselves. And there is truly a freedom in this. And there's many of you who are seeing this now, who have the same issue. Some of you are already touched when I talk about it. And you're thinking, this is me. My father was not there, my mother was not there. And what we often do when we talk about God is that God is our father. But then we take God down on a human level. So if we had a father who was not there and did hurt us or hit us or, or did not have time for us, we take God down and think God is like that. God don't have time for us. He hit us. He don't like us. But Jesus said, when you who give, give you who are evil give your kids good gift, how much more will your Father in heaven not give the Spirit to those who ask Him? So Jesus is saying that us here who are evil can do good things. But God who is in heaven, He's up there. He's so much stronger and better, purer and loving, like every Father here on earth. And we should never take God down on a human level and make Him like our fathers was here. And I would say, when I start to talk about this, there is many people who need to forgive their parents. Yeah, but they hurt me. They didn't give me what I needed. Yes, forgive them. There is so much power in forgiveness. Jesus, when he hang on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. We think, of course, they knew what to do. They took Jesus, put him on the cross. No, they did not know it. They were not free, those, Rob, uh, those Romans who put Jesus on the cross. They were not free. They were influenced by the Romans. They were influenced by fear. And they were influenced by a lot of lies. They did not know who Jesus really was. Otherwise, they had not done it. So they did it influenced by other people. The same way with you, mom, with your dad with people around us who hurt us in school, people who have mocked us, people who have stolen, people who have done things. We can forgive them. Why? Because they did not know what they do. If your father, if your mom was free and was not influenced by sin in this world and by a childhood where they also not experienced love, or hugging and forgiveness and, and what they had, if they are totally free, they have given you something else. But you cannot give something you don't have. And I would say that this is a big part of healing, big part of freedom, where we talk about this. And the body of Christ, the church, should be a family where we come in and give a big hug and experience that, that we are family. We are not members of a body, a member of a church like this. We are family. We love each other. And now my, and I say, no matter what, look at me. Again, I could not read. I could not write. I have a lot of problems. But God has set me free. My father never told me, as I remember, that he loved me. I had a hurt. My mom got sick. I had a hurt. But God has set me free and delivered me. And now I'm a father for many people. There's people, young girls and young boys, I feel I can be there. And sometimes you don't need to talk a lot. Sometimes you just need to give them a hug. Come on, I believe in you. I believe in you. So I want to end this up. We have got authority to cast out demons. When it's a demon, we don't need to know a lot. We just need to come out in the name of Jesus. But sometimes it's not a demon a delivered we need it. Sometimes it's a renewing of the mind. Sometimes it's the gospel. But very often it's just love. Love hide a multitude of sins. To come in and experience family, experience love. If that is you, if I meet somebody and I talk about those things, what I often say to them, who are you? What is your backpack? What have made you who you are? And now you have heard the teaching, what have made you who you are? What is your story? Some may say, oh, I have a problem with my mom or my father. Or, I lost a friend who died many years ago. I still have a hurt. I got teased in school and, 
and, and it opened up for something. Or I live in hard sin many years ago and I've never been able to let go. Or, or I have problem with this, I have problem with a sickness and it came in like this and I have problem with this, this. By hearing people telling the story, you then know, okay, do we start with the gospel? <laughs> do we start with casting out demons? Or maybe we start renewing the mind or maybe it's everything at the same time. Maybe they just need to forgive their parents and we pray over them and we command every hurt, every spirit on forgiveness and every hurt to leave. And then we, they cry and we give them a hug. <laughs> and there's freedom and healing there. And very often, we did it here with the students here on the Pioneer Training School a few days ago. I talked about this and there was people who broke down and crying and so on. And very often, something is starting there. Like when my mom got sick, I could not cry for years. I was not able to cry. But when the Holy Spirit came in, I started to cry, 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 cry. And that healing, it took a few months before everything was out of it. When do we know if a person is truly free? It's not always easy to see. Sometimes there is, we stand in a place where we think, hey, maybe I need more freedom. Our focus is not, oh, do I have problems? What is wrong? Our focus is just doing the right thing. But sometimes things pop up and then we deal with it. We pray into it and we see what it is. Is it something with the gospel we need? Is it the cast out demon or if it's the renewing of the mind or what is it? I hope you got something out of this teaching. It's a difficult teaching to do when I don't know who you are who are listening. If I saw you and you were standing in front of me right now, this is so much more simple and so much more easier. Because then I would just ask you, who are you? What is your problem? Do, 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 do. Okay. And then out of what you say, I will see, is there anybody you need to forgive? Okay. Is there anything you need to repent for? Okay. Have you repented? Have you got baptized in water? Have you received the Holy Spirit? If not, that is what you need. And then I will lead you to a prayer. Take your hands and get you to relax. And then I will pray a prayer with you where you maybe confess after me and say, God, I come to you. I take my mom and my dad and I lay them over to you. I take this hurt and I lay it over to you. I repent. I have forgiveness for my sins. I have sins. I have sinned. I need forgiveness. I need you to set me free. Set me free from this spirit of depression, what it is. And then I will pray for them. And then when I pray for them, as soon as I said, Amen, I was like, Holy Spirit, now it's you. And then I will speak. I say, I speak to your hurt, go right now. I speak to your hurt, forgiveness, unforgiveness, when your mom, dad, go right now. Spirit of unforgiveness, go right now. Spirit of depression, go right now. Spirit of infirmity, go right now. Speak to this spirit of eating disorder, leave her this pain, go right now. And now just speak, 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 speak. And often, <laughs> something is happening. You don't close your eyes, you have your eyes open so you can see the manifestation, what is happening. And sometimes, <sighs> you can just see that gone. Sometimes, you're not sure, you ask, is there more? Yeah, there's more. No, I'm free. And you pray for the Holy Spirit to fill them up. The best thing you can do is just try to do it. The worst thing you can do is take this teaching and think, oh no, it's too complicated. I don't know when it's that. Just do it. Just go out and do it. And you will learn by doing. Okay, the next teaching I'll do in a few weeks, I'm going to Israel first and Jordan to have some meetings. And then after Israel and Jordan, we are going to do a next lesson on the Pioneer School. And maybe if there is some questions to this lesson, I can start with that in the next lesson. I will end up now and hope you have got something out of this teaching and I will end up praying for you. You out there, now you have listened to this. There is authority. I would like to pray for you. Are you sick? Do you have sickness? Put your hand on the sick place. If you have hurt in your heart, put your hand there. And I will pray with you. And if you need to forgive people who have hurt you, then it's a decision. Decide in your heart that you want to forgive right now. And you pray with me. You pray and say, I forgive them right now. I forgive my parents, my mom, 
my father, what they did, what they did not do, how they are not there. I let go of this pain. I take this and I throw it on you, Jesus. And then I will pray for God to come and the Holy Spirit. If you need more freedom and deliverance, go to our map and find somebody close to you because this is something where people need to often sit down and do counseling. And, and you need somebody close to you who can do it or come to a Kickstarter event or something else. I will pray now. God, thank you for this teaching and thank you for what you're doing. Thank you because there's freedom in you, Jesus. I pray for those people who are seeing this right now. God, I pray for freedom. Freedom to them right now in the name of Jesus. Have you heard? Have you heard in their heart when it comes to the mom? Have you heard when it comes to the dad? Have you heard when it comes to people who have teased them in school? Have you heard when it comes to bad experience? I speak to this hurt. I speak to this spirit of unbelief and unforgiveness. I speak to this spirit of unforgiveness. I command that spirit to go right now. Right now in the name of Jesus. I speak to this hurt. Go right now. I speak to this sickness, this unclean spirit. I command command you leave that person right now i speak freedom and i speak life in the name of jesus i command you demon go right now you unclean spirit go right now you spirit of the infirmity go right now in the name of jesus i speak to you spirit of depression spirit of fear go right now in the name of jesus i command freedom in the name of jesus and i ask you god come with your holy spirit right now Come with your Holy Spirit right now and fill that person up, God. Come with your Holy Spirit, God. And if they need the gospel, if they need to repent and get baptized, Holy Spirit, come and convince them. Convince them that this is what they need. Open their eyes, God, and pray that they are going to experience the same freedom I and thousands of other people have experienced in you. So come, Holy Spirit, speak to them. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Come on, guys. I hope you got something out of it. I know it was a little long teaching, a lot of information. You're welcome to see this teaching more time so you really understand it and get it under your skin. Until next time, see you. God bless you. Bye-bye.